another video. It's right here, 351 short block. This is what's gonna be going in uh, my F 150 project, the 92 uh, OBS F 150. It's got the five liter in it right now. Uh, I went to the junkyard and pulled this out of a. Uh, it was the uh, brick nose style. Like a. Oh, 89, 90 model, F-150. We're going to be uh, pulling this thing apart. I'm going to use this ro rotating assembly in another 351 block that I have that's already bored. We're just going to be honing the cylinders. But for this video, I'm just going to show you what it takes to tear the bottom end apart, tear the short block apart. I've already got the cam out. I'm gonna roll this thing over and get you in here and let you see and we're gonna get started now in order to start tearing this thing apart you're gonna to want to stamp your rods uh, I lucked out mine are already stamped this one's I don't know if you can see but stamp five six seven eight and the other side will be stamped one, two, three, and four. If you haven't, if these ain't already stamped, you're going to want to get you a set of stamps and stamp them because uh, you need to put your rods back in the same hole they came out of, same cylinder. You don't want to mix match. So that's already been done for me. Every Ford I've ever tore into is already stamped. I'm guessing they do a factory. So I'm lucky. I've torn into some small block Chevrolets and uh, they are not stamped. You gotta stamp them yourself. And then as far as your main caps, they're, they're numbered. They got an arrow on them. Got your one, your two, your three, your four and then uh, this one's not numbered but I mean it's obvious start right up here in front number one number five cylinder take your rod cap off crank so I'm gonna try not to nick it or scuff it or tear nothing up so I can just lightly polish that crank and show it back in the other block.
rods and pistons out. Uh, it's time to go ahead and take all your main caps off. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take uh, just one off. I may take the three center ones off. I'm going to leave the end ones because uh, I want to measure the crank, make sure it's still standard. Which I'm pretty sure it is. Still had forward bearings in it. And uh, I think I'm going to leave this crank in here because I'm going to be uh, polishing this thing by hand. And I think it would be good just to leave it in here to polish it. I'll polish all the rod journals. And then I'll take it out and polish the main journals. So I can uh, get it thrown back in that other block. Usually, you know, you let a machine shop do all this. You tear it all down. You take it to them. They bore the block. They uh, check the crank. They polish it if it's good or turn it if it needs to be turned. But... This is going to be kind of a budget build, and I'm not trying to type a whole bunch of money in it. I've already uh, sprung for roller cam and aluminum heads. I didn't want to get a whole lot tied up in the rotating assembly if I didn't have to. And if this cranks all checks out, my other block's good. It's already bored 30. I don't really see the need to spend five or $600 at the machine shop if I don't have to. Now we got the the main caps off here, the three. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get a caliper and we're gonna measure just to make sure it's the rods, uh, uh, it's a standard, standard size. Make sure this crank hasn't been turned. Uh, the main journals here should be three inch and your rod journal should be 2.3. 2.311-ish. 1.308. It's close enough. I say that's so. What's the mains measure? Hopefully three inch. Three. Somebody said in point one. Two point one eighteen. Yeah, that ain't right. Oh, there we go. 
three inch. We're gonna go ahead and start uh, polishing these rod journals. What you're gonna want to do is uh, get you some 800 grit sandpaper and some 1000 grit sandpaper and some type of metal polish. Uh, Blue Demon's good. Uh, White Diamond probably would work. Uh, I've seen some people use uh, Turtle Wax, 3M, whatever you prefer. What you're going to do is you're going to spray some WD-40 on your 800 grit sandpaper. Then you're going to wrap it around the rod journal on your sandpaper. Cut it to the width of your rod journals. And then you're going to wrap it around. And you're going to get you a shoestring or the waistband out of a, a t-shirt or something or another. And uh, you're going to wrap it around the sandpaper. Maybe. You just want to sit here and saw this back and forth a few million thousand times. Well, maybe not that long. But do that for a little while. And probably just going to do it till uh, this little oil ridge comes out of the comes out of it, and then we'll. Uh, Go to the 1000 and then we'll polish it with some kind of metal polish. Alright, let's pop that off there and see what she looks like. Oh. You can see here where she's starting to starting to come around. It's lightening the oil mark a little bit. So here we got it. Nice and sanded with 800. I think we're just going to jump straight into polishing. I really don't see any reason to go 1,000. A lot of guys go 1,000, maybe 1,500, but that looks a lot better than what that does. So we're going to just polish it and see what happens. And uh, all we're going to do is get a piece of a waistband, rub some polish on it, and do the same thing you do like you're doing with sandpaper. Well, everyone, I lied. We're going to go ahead and hit this with a thousand grit also before we start trying to polish. 800 was a pretty decent finish, but hitting it with this thousand is going to make it a lot easier to polish. I went ahead and I, uh, I got this uh, Blue Magic polish. Word of advice, when you take the lid off of this, and it looks nice and creamy. Do not take a big whiff of it. It about put me on my butt. It smells, if you know what ammonia smells like, that's exactly what this smells like. Well, we've hit these uh, rod journals with 1,000. And we went ahead and hit this journal with the polish already. I don't know if you can tell, but pretty big difference when after you hit it with the polish. And uh, all we've done on the polish is uh, we've got an old t-shirt, cut a strip out of it. And then uh, you get some of this very harmful to your lungs <laughs> <laughs> polish here. Yeah, blue. Oh, that's some stout stuff. Golly. Just put a little bit on there. If you can bear it. Ain't like your traditional coconut lotion. Oh. And you just keep on playing. Seesaw with it. <laughs> Until you got a nice perfect polish. Or 
probably a good enough polish. Ain't nothing perfect, but that thing's come a long ways with just a little bit of work. We're going to go ahead and finish this journal. Do the other two rod journals. And then we're going to get this crank pulled out of here. Now that we got them rod journals all polished up, looking nice. I'm going to go ahead and take the front and back main caps off. Throw this thing over here on the bench. And repeat the same process on the main journals. Well, I got the crank out of the engine sitting on the bench. Got a piece of 1000 cut to length. And uh, mm -hmm. now we're going to just repeat the same process for the, the main journals. Well, here she is. Got the rod journals polished, main journals polished. For 18 bucks, we was able to save this crank and not go to the machine shop. The crank was in pretty good shape already. Wasn't no grooves or scarring or anything crazy. We just pretty much cleaned it up. It wasn't out of round or anything crazy like that. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll catch you later.